fellow St. Lucians, it was just a few months ago that our country engaged in one of the most transforming and liberating democratic exercises that brought to bear the dawn of a new political climate in this country. You came out in large numbers and sent a powerful message that St. Lucia deserves better and the time for progressive politics is now. I'd like to take this time to say thank you, St. Lucia, for the way you rallied around my party and me. The victory on June 6, 2016 was not just a victory for United Workers' Party, but a victory for the whole of St. Lucia. On June 6, you placed your trust and confidence in a government with a proven track record of performance. You have challenged us to lead, to govern, and though we inherited a broken and frail economy and are governing in a time of great economic and fiscal hardship, we shall live up to those expectations. Despite the present economic climate, our government's main concern is bringing some measure of immediate relief to the struggling people of this country, to get business flowing once again. This is one of the reasons we have pushed ahead with the implementing of our Five to Stay Alive proposal, despite those who said it could not be done. One of the first things we took care of was a decrease in the vehicle license fee, which became effective on September 1st. I know that motorists throughout the island took a collective sigh of relief and are appreciative that we were able to lessen this burden on their backs. Another component of Five to Stay Alive that we will achieve in this school year is increasing the school bus subsidy and expanding the school feeding program. As we stated clearly in our manifesto, taking care of our nation's children is at the forefront of our priorities. We want to ensure that our children get to school safely and they are well fed and ready to learn without having to be concerned about where their next meal is coming from. Children should not have to be burdened with these thoughts. I am pleased to announce that the three-year residential tax amnesty, a further part of Five to Stay Alive, takes effect 1st of January 2017 until December 31st, 2019. We know that almost everyone's dream is to own a piece of land and a home in their country, and government must assist where we can to make this dream a reality. We're acutely aware that people are finding it more difficult to pay their mortgages, and this three-year grace period will go a long way in helping homeowners meet their obligations. In addition to the waiver, we encourage persons to take advantage of the current tax amnesty offered by the Inland Revenue Department. Another promise, Five to Stay Alive, was a targeted amnesty on healthcare services. Too many people are dying who might have been saved if they were able to afford it. We are mindful of this and the Ministry of Finance is working with the Ministry of Health on the proposed targeted amnesty on healthcare, which we can expect to begin on the 1st of December 2016. This would mean that pensioners who earn less than $1,000 monthly would have their health care bills waived. This would also apply to unemployed persons and individuals on the poverty list. I'm especially happy that this included a waiver for dialysis patients who are without insurance. St. Lucia, we have an extensive plan for health care sector which will unfold in the upcoming months. They said it could not be done, yet we have delivered despite the challenges we face. And today, I am pleased to announce the delivery of our final promised Five to Stay Alive you've all been waiting for, the reduction in the value added tax. In our manifesto, we promised the people of St. Lucia a restructured tax regime that will be less burdensome but without compromising the revenue base. And we aim to keep this promise. Value added tax affects all of us, every day. It has destroyed businesses and drained our people to the core. We did not take the decision to reduce VAT lightly, however. We took time to review the current VAT system. We've commissioned a study by Ernst & Young and they undertook a comprehensive review of the VAT. Combined with the CDB report and our discussions with various financial agencies such as the ECCB and IMF, we received several recommendations on reforming the VAT system. Hence, I can announce to you today that our government will reduce the standard rate of value added tax from the current 15% to 12.5%. This reduction will become effective as of February 1st, 
2017 and will mean that an estimated $52.5 million a year will be pumped back into the hands of the people of this country. Tomorrow, the various legislation to put in effect the airport charge and the new VAT relief measures will come before the House of Assembly. My brothers and sisters, they said it could not be done. St. Lucia, we have done it and we will do more. We will continue to review the current tax regime and guarantee you that the overall objective of government's tax policy is to grow the economy. The goal is to reduce the tax burden on the population while making the tax system more business and investment friendly and most critically, ensuring fiscal sustainability. You've heard quite a bit over the past few weeks about the airport redevelopment charge, which we are proposing to reintroduce as of April 2017. This is not a new charge. St. Lucia previously had this charge, which had no effect on our tourism arrivals. In fact, if we had kept this charge, we would have collected in excess of $200 million, which is half of the monies needed to build a new airport. During our review, we found that most other Caribbean countries charge about U.S. $100. In essence, St. Lucia has been foregoing U.S. $75 per passenger or EC $100 million a year in revenue. Reintroducing this charge will also be less onerous on the citizens of this country and will significantly contribute to decreasing our national debt as a percentage of the monies raised will be allocated to a sinking fund. This is an additional revenue which will be set aside so St. Lucia can begin to take care of itself. I want to assure St. Lucia that this government is working, that our meetings with investors overseas and at home are not in vain. To have come into office when we did and put together a supplementary budget based on what we were left with would have been a waste of time and resources. We did not come into government to waste time. We're instead proposing a four-year strategic development plan for this country, a roadmap to keep us on course, to help guide us in building a prosperous St. Lucia for all. The government's four-year plan will be all-encompassing and focus on areas of tourism, healthcare reform, education, agriculture, security, public sector reform, the financial service sector, infrastructural development, and other major sectors. The details of this groundbreaking approach will be fleshed out with social and economic partners over the next three or four months. My fellow St. Lucians, we cannot continue to throw the same solutions at the same problems and expect to get a different outcome. It's vital that we adopt a different approach, one that will yield more progressive result. It is evident that some of what could not have been achieved in four and a half years by the previous administration has been made possible by my government in five, in five months. This shows that we are a government who is ready to put St. Lucia back on the path of economic and fiscal growth. I am therefore asking all St. Lucians to have hope, to have faith in the changes we are going to make to this country. I'm asking you to believe that things can change and get better if we all come together to rebuild this country. My government will continue to take pride in being a government of accountability, transparency, and results focused. Make no mistake, the ultimate goal of this government is to ensure that St. Lucia rises once again. So I urge you, my fellow St. Lucians, let us all be part of the solution and not the problem. I believe that what unites all of us should be our commitment to St. Lucia. I thank you. May God bless this country of ours and may we continue to strive for progress. Good evening.